the high multiples on some of these AI names like NVIDIA. One of the reasons my next guest just trimmed his exposure, although he does believe in the AI growth story long term. Let's speak with Steve Auth. He's chief investment officer of equities at Federated Hermes. Steve, it's great to see. Wow, look at NVIDIA down seven. Now it's at 108. And you, you were on this a couple of weeks ago. So walk us through the thought process. Well, no, it's a great company, NVIDIA, Kelly. Uh, it just had become too much of a momentum story for us. Uh, made an awful lot of money on it, uh, you know, stock trading at 40 times earnings. Uh, and I think we're kind of in a digestion mode here for AI. And importantly, um, stocks like NVIDIA, once they become big momentum stories like that, they need, they just don't need solid earnings growth and, and order growth, which I know a lot of bulls like to talk about, but they need accelerating uh, order growth, accelerating earnings growth. And we're kind of past the acceleration mode here, you know? So at the same time, we're entering the rate cut cycle. I mean, today's news only, you know, cast the final die on that one. So off we go. We've got probably 200 basis points of rate cuts in front of us. These big AI names have done really well when they were the only game in town with rates up at 10% on the 10 year. They don't really need funding, so financing is not important. But the other side of the market that mostly funds itself short, the value stocks, the cyclicals, the small caps, they're the real beneficiaries once rates start to decline. So that's kind of where we want to be right now. NVIDIA's journey to the top of the tech world has not been without its missteps. While the company is now synonymous with innovation, it's essential to examine past errors to understand how it has evolved. One significant misstep was the over-reliance on cryptocurrency mining. The surge in demand for GPUs to mine cryptocurrencies led to artificial shortages and inflated prices, alienating gamers and other consumers. While NVIDIA eventually took steps to address this, the episode highlighted the importance of balancing different market segments. The company recognized the need to ensure that its core customer base, particularly gamers, was not sidelined in favor of short-term gains from the volatile cryptocurrency market. Another area where NVIDIA has faced challenges is in product launches. Some high-profile releases have encountered issues, such as performance problems or pricing controversies. These setbacks can erode consumer trust and provide opportunities for competitors. For instance, the launch of certain GPU models saw mixed reviews due to performance issues that did not meet consumer expectations. Additionally, pricing strategies that were perceived as too aggressive created backlash, affecting the company's reputation. And uh, we thought it was time to take some chips off the table on the other side. It's a really well-timed pivot. I almost want to ask you just as a trading strategy. I mean, how do you know? Do you Is it just something psychologically or a gut feel where you just go, enough, it's gone too far? Or is it a numeric metric like an EPS, uh, a forward multiple, something like that? Well, it's both, Kelly. I mean, we, we look at all those things. But very honest, I you know, I was on vacation the week of July 4th. I came back and the market had taken off again. It, it it had closed. It was closing in at that point on our 2025 target, wow. which was six. So we were at 5,700. Uh, you know, we thought we were being pretty aggressive 18 months ago when we set out that 6,000 target. A lot of people accusing me of being a Pollyanna. <laughs> uh, but boy, I mean, there we were, and it just felt to me, yeah, maybe a little bit of a gut. Um, but the numbers cross hatched against that, and. You know, when all those things come together, I think it's time to make a move. You know, we've got a pretty big macro team at Federated Hermes and you know, do a lot of number crunching on this stuff as well. So it all adds together. And we just see much better earnings growth. If you look at it bottom, uh, your back half of the year, small caps in the first half of the year, value stocks, the entire growth of earnings in the S&P was coming from the big cap stocks, particularly the MAG7. And in the back half of the year, that really starts to spread out. And by next year, core and bottom up numbers, the growth rates on the small cap stocks are significantly higher mm -hmm. than the growth rates on the MAG7. So you got the growth shifting in your favor. It's been against you up to now. You got rates shifting in your favor. The small caps are the beneficiaries of lower rates. They've been hurt by the higher rates. That's, you know, it seems to, and they got valuations in your favor. So. It just seems to us like everything is lining up here. It doesn't surprise me we're having a bit of pullback today. I mean, these stocks went, you know, straight up. I mean, it looked almost like, uh, you know, it was almost too good to be true. Oh, sure. And 
Um, yeah, we need a little bit of a pullback. This doesn't surprise me at all. I think it's a great re-entry point for folks that see this story coming. However, NVIDIA has demonstrated its ability to learn from these mistakes. The company has become more adept at managing supply chain issues, ensuring a more consistent product availability, and addressing the needs of various market segments more effectively. Moreover, NVIDIA has shown a willingness to adjust product strategies based on market feedback, implementing improvements and enhancements in subsequent releases to regain consumer confidence. By analyzing past missteps, NVIDIA can continue to refine its operations and maintain its competitive edge. The company's commitment to innovation remains strong, and its ability to adapt and learn from previous errors positions it well for future challenges. As NVIDIA continues to navigate the complexities of the tech industry, its resilience and responsiveness to market dynamics will be key factors in sustaining its leadership position. NVIDIA's journey is a testament to its ability to pivot and grow. The company's proactive measures to address the fallout from cryptocurrency reliance, coupled with its refined approach to product launches, show a dedication to meeting consumer needs and maintaining trust. This evolution underscores the importance of flexibility and listening to market feedback. As NVIDIA looks to the future, these lessons from the past will undoubtedly inform its strategies, ensuring that it remains at the forefront of technological innovation while continuing to satisfy its diverse customer base. I got to, to interrupt with a really funny story that happened recently. McDonald's in China. If you order a McFlurry, they ask you if you want a NVIDIA keychain with it, and it only sells for $20. But the problem is, they only made that available to less than 10,000 customers. So their NVIDIA keychain is already sold out, and it's right now in the retail market and sells for hundreds of dollars. And Elon commented on this, and he said that he had no idea that this was happening, and added, in that case, I will definitely have some just for you to know. The first link in description. Click on it if you want to buy this NVIDIA keychain. I don't know if this is a collaboration, but NVIDIA in China has posted about this, and also McDonald's in China posted about it. But anyways, in the next couple of years, this product might even sell for thousands of dollars. We don't get that many chances to buy rare collectibles like this. Anyways, find the link at the description and hurry, because we have just 100 pieces left. So thinking about these, uh, these you know, token factories, um, I yeah. feel like a big question right now is uh, whether the models saturate, uh, in the sense that you know, we demoed the Sigma Assistant uh, on stage earlier, and you, know, you can write some natural language, and we convert that to SQL. And going from you know, a, maybe a 7 billion parameter model to a 70 billion parameter model or something like that, might, you know, there might be a significant kind of uh, consequential improvement in query accuracy for the user for the typical kinds of queries that people tend to construct. But maybe going to a model that's 10x larger than that is sort of unnecessary. Like at some point you get to good enough, you can reliably convert the natural language to SQL. I think there's a question of, you know, for the use cases for which LLMs are being deployed, you know, what, what does that saturation curve look like? And for how many use cases does one need a trillion parameter model or a 10 trillion parameter model? Or do we simply reach a point where you know, some number that is, say, less than 100, 100 billion is sufficient? Do you have any point of view on that? Or is that even you know, a reasonable way to look at the question um, in the first place. Okay, let's break it down, let's reason about it. <laughs> in, in public, appropriately. In al almost everything, every question I get. Okay, let's break it down, let's reason about it. Uh, so, so let's start with an example. Uh, in 2012, AlexNet was uh, computer vision, image net, uh, image recognition, 82% or something like that, accuracy. Over the next almost not quite 10 years, I think it was like seven years, uh, every single year, the accuracy error reduced in half, right? Every, every year, the error reduced in half, or otherwise known as Moore's Law, okay? So, so you double the performance, you double the accuracy, um, and you double its believability uh, every single year. Over the course of seven years, it's now superhuman. Same thing with speech recognition, same things with, with uh, natural language understanding. Uh, we want to know, we want to believe, not know, we want to believe that the answer that's being predicted to us is accurate. We want to believe that. And so the industry is going to chase um, that believability or that accuracy 
uh, and, and double its accuracy uh, 2x every year. I believe that's going, to same thing, that's going to be the same thing with natural language understanding. And of course, the, problems, the problem space is a lot more complicated, but I have every certainty that we're going to double its accuracy every single year uh, to the point where it is so accurate. And we've, we've largely tested across many of your examples when you interact with it that you go, you know what, this is really, really good. I believe the answer that it's producing for me. That condition is very important. The second thing is this. Um, today's language models, today's AI, and everything that we've, we've shown are one shot. And yet, you and I both know that there are many things that we think about that are not one shot. You have to iterate. And so how do you come up, how do you reason about a plan? How do you uh, come up with a, a strategy to solve a problem? Uh, maybe you need to use tools. Maybe you have to look up some proprietary data. Maybe uh, you have to do some research, in fact. Maybe you have to ask another agent. Maybe you have another, ask another AI. Maybe you have to be human in a loop, ask a human, uh, trigger an event, send an email to somebody or text to somebody, get a response before you can move on to the next step of that, of that plan. And so a large language model has to iterate and think of a plan. That's not a one-shot thing. And once it comes up with a plan, as it traverses that graph, um, there's a whole bunch of language models that are going to get instantiated and in initiated. And so I think your, your future models are going to iterate. And so instead of, instead of just uh, instead of a, a one-shot model, it's going to be a planning model with a whole bunch of other models around it that are particularly good at particular skills. And so I think we have long ways to go. Um Meta garnered a lot of attention last week uh, for the release of Llama 3, which seems to be yeah, the most impressive uh, open source model thus far. Yeah. Any thoughts on open source models? If you ask me uh, what, are, what, are, what are the top most important events in the last couple of years, I would tell you, of course, ChatGPT, uh, reinforcement learning, human feedback, grounding it to human values, and having the technology necessary to do that, uh, obviously a breakthrough um, and, and uh, democratized uh, computing. It made it possible for everybody to be a programmer. Everybody's now doing amazing things with it. Uh, ChatGPT, um, the work that OpenAI did, you know, Greg and Sam and the team, really proud of them. Uh, the second thing that I would say that, it, that is, is uh, just as important, I would say, is Llama, not, not Llama 1, but Llama 2. Llama 2 activated just about every industry to jump into uh, working on generative AI. And it, it uh, opened the floodgates of every industry being able to access this technology. Healthcare, financial services, you know, you name it, manufacturing, you name it, customer service, retail, you know, all kinds. I think Llama 2, Llama 2 and Llama 3, because it's open sourced, it engaged research, it engaged startups, engaged industry, it, it made generative AI accessible. I think that's a very big deal. And so I think ChatGPT democratized computing. I think Llama democratized generative AI. Does it make sense? And I, I, think, I think without it, it's very hard to have activated all of the research on safety and um, all of the different ways of change of thought and you know, all the reasoning th technology that's, that's now being developed and, uh, all the reinforcement learning stuff and, you know, uh, that stuff would have been very hard to have activated without Llama. What's hotter than NVIDIA stock this year? It's something that would be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the near future. The rare limited edition NVIDIA keychain collectible. Our initial stock vanished in seconds. Get yours now from the link below.